All right, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the walk-off. I'm Scott Belfort, joined, as always, by Adam Mack, and this is the mailbag. So what we have started doing over the last month is whenever we put out a podcast, we then sift through the comments and take questions and stuff like that from people who have messaged us, compile a list, and then we kind of talk about your comments and questions. And that is where we're at. Let's do this, buddy. All right, so first one comes from Steve Williams on YouTube, who says, Guess what, everyone? The Toronto Blue Jays have DFA'd Rafael Dolis. Should have come sooner. Maybe it should have come sooner. Come sooner. Steve might be on to something there. <laughs> um, definitely, Rafael Dolis was a tough thing to sit through. In 2021, he had a breakout season in 2020. Of course, they went and got him out of Japan. After four years of not being in the major league, so it was pretty impressive to see him come in and and do what he did. And he's got that big bad sinker when he's got it working and when he's locating his pitches. Rafael Dolis is a very good option out of the pen. However, he has not located his pitches and has not hit his spots this season. And... There really wasn't a lot of depth in this bullpen after a bunch of injuries. And really, we were leaning on him when they had no one else to lean on. And it cost the Blue Jays some games. So, should have he been DFA'd sooner? Adam? Probably. Probably. But Better late than never. Choices, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, who was the replacement for Delise on the 40-man roster? Well, I think when it was... Uh... Dolis that was sent down they brought up was it Kevin Smith was it Otto Lopez I think it was Kevin Smith you know what I it was Kevin Smith yeah yeah who actually had his major league hit first major league hit the other yeah. day which was pretty cool to watch his dad in the crowd and his his parents all excited we've got to see that a few times yeah with this year's Blue Jays team you know a, a kid cool. come up and make his major league debut and Kevin uh, Smith, it's kind of cool. Yesterday, all of a sudden at 1030 at night, I get a message on Twitter on the walk-off account. Kevin Smith hit us up. He's like, <laughs> hey, guys, I know you've tried to get a hold of me a few times. Uh, I'd love to do the podcast, which is very exciting. He said he probably can't do it until after this Detroit series this weekend. But, yeah, Kevin Smith of the Toronto Blue Jays should be joining us next week. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, all right, next comment. Uh, also from Steve Williams, um, said the season, yes, is on the line for the Blue Jays uh, this week. But if they don't make the playoffs, management is going to have to have a real reconsider of Charlie Montoyo's role with the club. Oof. Boy, again, Steve is hitting the nail on the head. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel about that, Adam? Where are you at with Montoyo at this point? Uh, well, I think... We were kind of texting about it during last night's game against the White Sox. Uh, we cannot manufacture runs when we need to, mm -hmm. right? Like we've seen a couple times now where it's a it's either a tie game or we're down by one. You know, in those last three innings of the game, we get the leadoff runner on, and then we can't cash him in. Yeah. Right, it was just, scoring position the last month has been terrible. It's been bad, right? The baseball side of baseball as Joel put it. And I think that so that comes down to your manager. Then? That, I think, then. I think, I don't know who else you can blame. I mean, we can blame the kids, but also it sure would be nice to throw a hit and run or some bunting or something into yeah. the mix. I mean, the strategy, I mean, the strategy been. right now is pinch hit Valera, cross your fingers that we can hit a home run. Like, I don't know. That what was the... literally the, the situation I was about to bring up there was pinch hitting Kirk for Valera to lay a bunt down with a guy that's throwing 100 miles an hour. I don't know who of you out there who has has ever laid down a bunt, but 100 miles an hour is pretty darn tough to do it on, especially to yeah. deaden the ball enough to not create the out that did eventually come. Exactly. I don't know, man. You're, maybe you're right. Maybe Montoyo is... I mean, we've Got been defending Montoyo season. all season long with the bullpen, and, well, he's doing the best with yeah. what he's got, but I don't know. At some point, it's... the Bucks got to stop somewhere, and it's not stopping with Atkins and Shapiro, so I think yeah. the logical place would be Montoyo. I think that 
he's done a fair job managing this team through a rebuild and maybe it is time to bring in somebody with a little bit more winning acumen i don't know or at least someone that can do a backflip standing on the field bring stubby, in stubby clap bring in stubby <laughs> clap all right uh moving on next comment is from uh forgiveness or love says Jays should not have wasted top prospects on this year's playoff run. It wasn't worth it. Well, that is still kind of a wait and see type statement. It's hard to crap on him for that view because maybe they shouldn't have gone all in here, moving their number one and number four prospect to bring in Burrios. Maybe that wasn't the move, but maybe it was. This is the thing with this trade is it. there's going to be a lot of wait and see on this. I like Burrios. I think he's a great addition to this starting rotation. The fact that he's under control next year as well. And the fact that they're going to give him a taste of Toronto. And you know the fans are going to just be in true Toronto fashion, over the top and boisterous and excited. And maybe oh, when he sees the atmosphere there, it kind of breaks down some of those stereotypes the players have about Toronto as a market, and maybe they can lock him up long-term. And if that's the case, then I think maybe it was worth those two prospects. Well, that was one of the responding comments to that comment. Uh, just me, that's their username, not me, myself. Yeah, just uh, pause for one second here, because sure. I do want to bring up that I love that we're getting to the point and the views are high enough on our stuff <laughs> where people are arguing with each other yes. in our comments. Beautiful, folks. Keep it up. <laughs> Absolutely. Keep bickering. This is great. Um, so Just Me responded to Forgiveness or Love and said, basically pointed out that uh, Barrios was a much-needed arm, which we can't argue with, uh, mm -hmm. but that he will also pay off next year and beyond as he is under team control next year. Um, but the, the quote is, it is hard to lure free agents to Toronto, uh, but we have a lot of success re-signing or extending them once they are here. Great point. And I love that. And that's kind of what we were just talking about, mm -hmm. right? Is that you bring them in and show them the atmosphere in Toronto and kind of break down some of those negative stereotypes that folks who have not been and played in Toronto before sometimes have. And maybe... You know, you give them a deal that's going to level out the taxes everyone's worried about with going to Canada, and maybe you can lock them up. I, th I think there's not necessarily a hometown discount associated with Toronto, but I, I do think no. there is an advantage financially to having a guy re-sign here as opposed to come in uh, fresh off the market. I, like a, with Springer and having is, to overpay... But yeah. Simeon is another good candidate. I think we're going to see that next year, where That's we'll have exactly to give him. I was just going to bring up. We'll have to give him fair market value, but I don't think we'll have to overpay. And Does I that agree make sense? with that. And I think after what happened last year in Oakland, where Simeon just the heart and soul of that A's team, and so tight with that A's clubhouse, like that was one of the things everyone in Toronto was excited about when he came to Toronto, is just all of the talk about what a leader he was and how well-liked he was in that A's clubhouse. And you're seeing it firsthand here with the Blue Jays that the same thing has happened. So maybe you're right. Maybe they can lock him up at market value. And I think the same thing goes for Robbie Ray, right? Like yeah. this is a guy who really likes this Toronto organization, has been very vocal about how appreciative he has been of Pete Walker and the pitching staff here and that he really feels that with their help, He's managed to kind of lock into he's having a career year he's not walking anyone and this is a guy who led the league in walks in both 2018 and 2020 right like this is a guy who has struggled with control his entire career and here he is at 29 years old his contract year and this toronto blue jays pitching staff has turned him into a legitimate ace and so maybe for market value the jays can actually lock him up and i don't know what that looks like it could be 22 to 25 million a year for Ray at this point. Um, but time will tell. Well, we talked with Dara Harris of the high performance department. Yes, just today, just this morning, that episode is up right now. Um, and she had such a good point about just the like relationship and trust that goes into a player's, uh, you know, when their career and livelihood is in the hands of someone to, the trust that you have to have when they tell you to tweak something with your delivery or your swing 
to be able to, to try it and stick with it until you see the results, right? And I think that, I mean, we can criticize Montoya all we want, but I think Pete Walker is pretty universally beloved, mm-hmm. right? So maybe that's a factor for Robbie Ray where he's like, look, I found something special here and uh, do I really want to risk Let's going somewhere else? Exactly. And so who knows? Very good point. All right, moving on to one of our last comments here for the day. Um, On Twitter, uh, Josh Goldberg said, The Jays fall to a rancid 2-8 in extra innings, to which Tyler responded, There's so many things the Jays have done poorly. How do you measure the clutch factor? Poor late in games. Poor in extras. Both hitters and pitchers are not clutching up. Is that due to youth and inexperience? Is that the manager? Is that strategy? The Blue Jays just keep finding ways to lose. How do you feel about that? Number one, I think it's just such a good tweet. Like, it's such a good representation of this team and where they're at and what's going on and how frustrating it's been as a fan because everything he mentioned is the case. They do not win late in games. They find ways to lose. And that's been one of the most frustrating thing watching this team who is still in the hunt for a wild card spot. Mm-hmm. I mean, they still are only four and a half games back. It is only August 24th right like there's still five weeks of baseball to play we're at what 39 games left something like that yeah Uh, i didn't check before i said that but we're in that zone where the the jays probably need to win 28 to 30 games of these last just under 40 yeah probably a 700 winning percentage at least yeah which is a hot streak for sure but it's not out of it's not crazy right so Yes, I think inexperience is a big reason why this team is getting into tight situations and then blowing it. And some bad luck, too. I mean, look at that game that they lost against Detroit on Sunday. What a heartbreaker that was. That was a 2-1 win. And then it won two outs in the in the ninth. Simeon routine ground ball, and he's been amazing all year. Like amazing to a level of he's probably going to get gold glove consideration at second base and he threw the ball away so again yeah the jays are finding ways to lose when a win would be massive right like it is pretty wild that even with how much they've struggled over the last couple weeks that they're still only four and a half games back like yeah just lucky at times well a big part of that is the yankees swept the red Sox. Yes. Yankees are white hot right now. Yeah, aren't they? And we have we the need Yan- to do what the Yankees are doing right now to be considered a playoff team by the end. Uh, and we've got the Yankees coming up, so we got to right the ship quickly yeah. because going into New York, we better have all of our ducks in a row. And, I mean, great start against the White Sox. Manoa yeah. came out and pitched an absolute gem. Big game pitcher. That's what you... Like, that's what Alec Manoa is proving he is, man. As a rookie, just amazing. Years in, he comes in and pitches the game of his life. You know, like, it was beautiful. And he knew that he had to go that extra inning. He knew he had mm-hmm. to push his pitch limit. He knew that the bullpen is a real roll of the dice right now. And the way he kind of stepped up is like Tyler said, right? We saw a clutch moment with this young kid. And the more you see from that young cord in those type of situations, I think the better this team is going to be. That said, still only two runs, dude. They scored two runs. And one of them was given to them. (laughs) One one thing I got to say on Alec Manoa, this this is my way too early hot take on Alec Manoa. He might be my favorite Blue Jays pitcher since Roy Halladay. Is that wild to say? I like that. I hey man, it's not that wild. He is uh, warming his way to the the center of my heart pretty quick too. <laughs> definitely uh, a special young man. <laughs> yeah, definitely a special young man. All right, one more comment here, and then we will uh, switch over to the uh, live stream coverage. This one yes, is and all from... of you who are in live stream right now. Thank you so much. Obviously, we will yes. converse with you shortly here. Once yes. the game gets going, we're just answering our mail bag. So all the comments we've kind of had over the week. Go ahead, Adam, with this last one. All right. Uh, 
a little bit of a silly one, but uh, Dulce Marist says, someone needs to create a meme with Charlie Montoyo's face combined with Inigo Montoya from The Princess Bride that says, hello, my name is Charlie Montoyo. I manage your team. Prepare to cry. <laughs> and anybody that's seen The Princess Bride knows exactly how funny that is. Anybody who's younger than 30 thinks, what the yeah. fuck is going on right now? What are these two guys yapping about now? Yeah. No. Somebody out there, make that meme. It's hilarious. Yes, I love absolutely. that. Absolutely. Dolce Marist. All right. Well, there is our mailbag episode in the books. Uh, get your comments in on all our YouTube yeah. videos. Uh, shoot us a message on Twitter, Instagram, anything like that. And we'll, uh, we'll get to uh, it next week. at Walk Off Podcast on Twitter and The Walk Off Podcast on Instagram. And, of course, you can message Adam and I. And we will make sure to get your questions and comments out there. There you go. Scott runs the Twitter. I run the Instagram. And we both neglect the Facebook. <laughs>